God is so very, very good. I'm so excited about all the things of the Spirit of God, that God's given us a word. We've been speaking uh, lately about the living word. And uh, it's great to know that all this that God has spoken to us in his word, he's given us this book. It's alive, it's powerful, it's sharper than a two-edged sword. And it's uh, God's word to you and me. But, you know, unless you believe it, it's just another book. And if somebody said to you, you know, uh, I've, I've just uh, given you a brand new car. It's out in the car park. Um, you know, all you've got to do is just jump in it and drive it away. You know, but if you don't believe that, you won't even go out into the car park. You think, oh, no, nobody would ever do that for me. One of the things is because we've lived in our life, we think, would God do that for me? Would God really, really set me free? Would, would God really heal me? Would God love me like that? And, and this morning, when Sharon brought that prophetic word, it sort of it just broke something, you know, in, in people's thinking, in my thinking too, that, hey, God loves to hear our voice. And it doesn't matter, as Tom said, whether it's in tune or out of tune. I feel sorry for people that have got to sing in tune. Because I can sing any tune, any song in any tune. And sometimes I break out into a song and uh, people know the words, but they can't recognize the melody. And uh, sometimes we sing in di about seven different keys before somebody finds the right one. And then away we go. But you see, God is not most probably what we think he is. God is an amazing God. He loves us. He loves us so much that he sent his son. And God's got a plan for your life. When I got saved, I was a, a, a builder. I had a builder's registration. I had a real estate license. We had a, I had a business called Gregory and Myers. We used to, uh, we were even uh, had TVs that we were leasing out. We were, you know, we were the next best thing. We were, we were going to become multi-millionaires and we were going to do this and we were going to do that. But you see, I gave my life to Jesus and really I did not understand that. But when I gave my life to Jesus and I said, Lord, I surrender, I give you my life. Because, you see, he gave me his life. So I thought it was a fair deal. He gave his life to me, so I thought I'll give my life to you. But when I did that, from that time on, my dreams and my purpose in life began to change. And there's a lot of people that are going through change. And if you don't understand that it's God that's got a hold of your life, you'll fight that change. You'll fight what God wants to do in your life. And I know that I fought it. But you see, I sing a little song. Jesus got a hold of my life and he won't let me go. And Jesus wants to take me somewhere. J Jesus, you know, came into this world as a servant. And what we've got to be careful of is that we understand that he is the King of Kings, that he is the Lord of Lords, that he is the Messiah, that he is the champion of champions. He is the master in chief. And he came into this world as a servant. But you see, if we've got wrong concepts about God, we try to make Jesus our slave. Heal me. Bless me. Give me money. Do this for me. And we've got Jesus running around the place, we think, just at my beg and call. But you see, it's a two-way street. You see, Jesus died for me. If we understand servanthood, uh, we will to totally change. The Bible says in um, Matthew 6, verse 33, it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. It's not a matter of just saying, God, you do this. But as I become a seeker of God, as I become a worshiper of God, as I, as I become like clay in his hands, as I become putty, as I come and say, God, would you do whatever you want to do in my life, have your way in my life. Then as I cry out to him, as I begin to pray and, and spend time in the word, then and only then will God add to me. Seek first the kingdom of God and righteousness, his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So we've been talking about 
the living word. And we've been sharing about what the word of God says and all the promises that God's given to us. He's given us many, many precious, precious promises. Many promises. We've got to find out that what it really represents. What does it really mean? What do I do? What is, what is my purpose on this planet? What is the purpose of the church on this planet? Why is the church here? Why didn't God just rapture us, rapture us up years ago? Why didn't he? Why, 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 why? Because God's going to have a glorious church. He's going to have a powerful church. you believe that? He's going to have a church that knows him, that knows the power of his resurrection. The Bible says in Revelation 12, verse 7, from 7 to 12, I believe that there's a people that are going to start to stand up and declare, declare what God has done. I believe that's what Mark's heart is, is to get us to a place where, where we just don't, don't say a word, say a phrase, Jesus loves me, or by the stripes of Jesus I'm healed. But somewhere or other there will be a strong declaration something that comes from the gut, something that comes from the heart, something that comes from the inner man, the spirit man, that, that makes a declaration that, that, that stands in the presence of every enemy and say, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. That will smash. And I, and I, and I just saw, as I said that, like the, like the, the, the eggshell, that will smash the eggshell that the yolk can come out. It'll smash the, and, and if you realize that the thing that surrounds your life that stops you from entering into what God's got for you is about as thin as an eggshell. And it's easy to be cracked. That the reality, that the truth will flow out into your life. Church must start to declare the word of God. Revelation chapter 12, and I'm just going to read from verse 7. And war broke out in heaven. Can you believe that? That You know, we've got a, a picture of heaven, I guess, but war broke out in heaven. <laughs> God just doesn't tolerate junk, you know that? <laughs> he doesn't tolerate rubbish. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who declares the whole to the whole world, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them uh, before our God day and night, has been cast down. Friend, he has been cast down. Amen? You believe that today? That's worth a little bit of an amen. <laughs> and they overcame him, that's the devil, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony or their declaration. And they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that his time is short. No good messing around. There is an enemy out there. He's been cast out of heaven and he's down here and he's, he's, he's bringing wrath and troubles and tri his trials and doing whatever he can to deceive the church, to pull it down, to, to destroy its power. But I thank God that we have... We overcome him by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, and we love not our lives or not love the, not the way we are, but we're going to change. Amen. How many people want to change? Now lift up your hands right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come to you. We're a people that want to change, and your word says that you're changing us from glory to glory. We just don't want to change for change's sake. But my God, we want to be part of this end time church. We want to be part of the revival fire. We want to be part of what you're doing in this day, right now, this day, today. Whatever you're doing today, we want to be part of it, Lord. We don't want to be lagging. We don't want to be back somewhere else. 
We want to go forth with you and we'll give you all the praise. We'll give you all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. Satan is defeated. He's been cast out of heaven, down to earth, where the church, you and me, it's our job to finish him off. Amen? Turn to somebody and say, it's our job to finish him off. There was a war in heaven. There was a massive war in heaven. They fought in heaven. We know who won. They cast him out. They kicked him out. They threw him out down to earth. For not so so as he's going to come and harass us and destroy us, but so we can finish him off. Amen? And what we're going to do is we're going to finish him off and make him a footstool for our Lord and Savior. Amen? That's the church's job. That's why I'm here. That's why you're here. And that's why God wants to bring that to our lives, what, all about what he's about and what's going to happen. It's finished. Finish him off. He made a footstool. Uh, I believe that. You see, Psalm 101 talks about that. It talks about uh, for the Lord, uh, you know, will be, sorry, finish, and he will be made a footstool. Just uh, my tongue is not catching up with every part of me yet here at the moment. I'm just shakabundi. <laughs> He will be made a footstool for our Lord. That's found in Psalm 110, verse 1. The New Testament speaks of that five times. I believe that he wants to get it to us. Don't go to sleep on the Lord. Don't go to sleep. I believe that you and I are part of this amazing end-time church. How many of you want to be part of the, this awesome end-time church that God's raising up? Come on. You want to, don't go to sleep. Don't go into lullaby land. Don't go bye-byes, amen. Stay alive, stay alert, stay full of power, full of the anointing, full of the victory of the cross. I believe that God's going to raise up the church even from the ashes to take our place, to overcome the enemy of faith and our Lord. Really, he's the enemy of the Lord before us, amen. The Lord is going to raise up an army. I love that. Amen. Have a look in the book of Luke. Book of Luke. I had my book Bible upside down. I'm having a bad trot up here today. <laughs> How many people love Jesus though? How many people don't mind if I get messed up a bit? I, I Look, truly, I am so excited. I am so excited, really. Do I look excited? No, you don't look excited. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. After these things, the Lord appointed 70. Your Bible might say 72. Don't be worried about it. It's just a, a little bit of a thing there that people got messed up a bit, but I don't care whether you call it 70 or 72, but at the moment I'm just going to read what my Bible says, but I do believe that it was 72. <laughs> After these things, and it doesn't really matter much, but it matters a lot if you really want to go into that, and I'm not going to go into that. The Lord, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Number one, if you're going to be part of this end time church that God's going to raise up, there's certain things that you need to know. Number one, you must know that you are appointed. He appointed 70. 72, whatever. But you've got to know that you're appointed. Every born-again believer who loves Jesus is appointed. Amen? You're appointed. God has appointed you. you sometimes people are sitting around wondering about, what am I going to do? Where, where do I fit? Well, I want to tell you, you won't fit anywhere until you realize that you're appointed and that God's already spoken to you what He wants you to do. He's already given you uh, certain things that, that He wants you to do in your life. Number one, you must know that you're appointed. And number two, you must know that you are sent. You are sent. The Bible tells you in Mark 16, verse 20, and He says, you know, that He sent them. He said, go into all the world and preach this gospel. You are appointed. You are sent. You're sent into all the world. You're not sent 
to go to church. This is not it. This is where forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. This is where we come to bring spiritual songs. He is the king. <laughs> this is where we come to do and gather and, and, and build one another up in the faith. But you are appointed and you are sent to go into all the world to preach this gospel. You are appointed, you are sent to lay hands on the sick so they will recover, to cast out devils. If you drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm you. You will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You see, we, if, we, if we don't understand, we, we've got, we can say, oh yeah, the word of God is alive, it's living and that, but if it's not living, that it motivates me and activates me to do what it says, well, it's, it's, it's really nothing. And we've got to get rid of that mindset. We've got to get rid of that thing that Mark was talking about. Next Sunday is going to be a great Sunday. If he doesn't preach on that, whatever he preaches on, because I reckon that's, that's his heart, amen? And whatever he preaches on, that's going to come out of him. <laughs> and people need to be set free, amen? And I believe for that to happen. You've got to know you're appointed, that you're sent. Go into all the world and preach this gospel to every creature, laying hands on the sick. What is the gospel? What is the gospel? I'm glad you asked that question. Find the gospel in uh, Luke 10, uh, verses 8 and 9. It says, Every city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things as they set before you. Heal the sick there. Say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. See, the gospel isn't just going around, you know, and praise God, don't misunderstand me. The gospel didn't just come around saying, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me, but friend, that I know that. But that, you see, Paul said, when I come to you, I didn't come to you with saying, Jesus loves you. I come with power and demonstration. I came healing the sick, amen. I came ministering the anointing. I came with, with authority. I came with the power of God around me. When people see the power of God, when they see the anointing, see, people came to Jesus and they said, Master, we know that you are sent from God because we see the anointing, we see the power, we see what you're doing. And after that, then you can say, Jesus loves you. <laughs> Is that sinking in? Jesus loves you. Heal the sick and say, the kingdom of God has come near you. This is similar to what Jesus spoke to his disciples, the 12 disciples in Matthew 10, 7 and 8. He said, as you go, preach the gospel, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. See, healing the sick is part of the gospel, amen. Oh, man. Shakabundi. Is anybody else back there? My band's behind the curtain there shouting, hallelujah, I can hear. <laughs> Saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. Go out and preach this gospel, healing people, setting captives free, amen. In Luke uh, 10, 17, another Thing, you know, he's, he sent the, the, seven, uh, the, sorry, the 70 out. Verse 17, it says, Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Amen. They were here. The demons are subject to us. I saw Satan fall uh, like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority 
I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, don't marvel that the devil is subject to you, but marvel that your name is written down in the book of life. You see, in our minds, we have different levels of authority. If you're, if you're low down in the army, a corporal or something like that, you have a certain amount of authority. But then the sergeant comes in and he's got more authority. Then the lieutenant comes in and he's got more authority. And it just keeps going on and on and on like that until the commander in chief, or say in America, it's the president of the United States. He is the commander in chief and he has all authority. You see, Jesus didn't come down and say, I give you authority as a corporal. But he said, I give you my authority. I give you the same authority that I have. I give you the authority. I give you the power of attorney. I give you the right to use my name. I give you everything that I have. I give it to you. So, if it's, And I'm just going to, if I can, say, Sharon, I give you my authority. I give you my authority. It's Jesus imparting into us his authority, the commander-in-chief, the king of kings, the lord of lords, amen, has given me his authority, which is the highest authority, that at the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow. That at that mighty name of Jesus, when I lay hands on the sick, they will recover. That at the name of Jesus, when you speak the word, it will heal people, it will deliver people, it will set people free. As the word is preached, the, the power of God will go out and, and mess with people's brains and unscramble them and untangle the knots and untangle the deception and to untangle lies. And lies will be pulled out of people's lives and they'll stand strong and they'll go out empowered to go out and do the work of God. At the moment, the church is so messed up. We've got to catch things. We've got to understand that God has given us authority. So number three, you must know you have authority given to you by the Lord Himself. Now, you know, a lot of times we, we've, we've, you know, had lines of people there that are going into the ministry and we, we are, uh, impart into their lives. We do the do our thing, and that's good, but it's not the best, Amen. Until I get a revelation and understanding that God Himself, Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the moment I got born again, laid His hands on me and said, Neil, I give you the authority. And when you get that revelation, and I haven't got it fully, I don't, I don't believe anybody on this planet has got it fully yet. But I believe that God's unlocking the mysteries and He's starting to pull the blankets over that we've been over our heads, starting to open it up and the light of God is beginning to shine because this end time church is going to be a powerful church, amen. But if we don't start pushing in, if we don't start pressing in, we'll never make it. We'll never get there. But oh, praise God, we're going to get there, amen. You know why we're going to get there? Because God said we're going to get there. He promised us in His Word that we're going to get there. You must know you have the authority given to you by the Lord Himself. You've got, you, visualization is very, very important. Visualization is very, very important. And if you can somehow or other see wherever you're seated, shut your eyes and just look away to God and, and watch Him walk over to you and lay hands on you, and impart that authority into you. Neil, I give you the authority, the same authority that I have, I give to you. I give it to you. And then you start to say, thank you, Jesus. You start to rejoice. Let's just have a little look at this again. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents, 
and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. When you get a revelation of that, you start to rejoice. You start to rejoice. Hey, my name is written in heaven. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm heaven bound. I'm glory bound. Amen. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm on my way to heaven. It doesn't matter what happens in the meantime, but I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus and I'm on my way to heaven. I believe he's going to take me by the hand. He's going to walk me through every circumstance, every situation, everything that that foul enemy that was cast down to planet earth will try to do to stop me. I believe that Jesus will help me to jump over him. Amen. Triumph over him in Jesus' name. Friend, we've got to start to rejoice. Rejoice greatly. Rejoice greatly. Well, it's got a bit of a fright. Rejoice. Put a smile on your doll. I tell people here, if you can't wake up with a smile, put a coat hanger in your mouth. Do something, amen. Neil, I give you this authority. I'm not being smart. That's for every one of us. Amen. He's given me this authority. And I want to rejoice. I want to rejoice not at that. I want to, that's great, but I want to rejoice because I'm born again, saved from sin, on my way to heaven. Anybody here ever found that things in life can get you down at times? My brother's already talking about brokenness. Broken spirit, broken hearts, brokenness. But it won't last forever. Anybody here ever had a major problem? <laughs> Is it gone? <laughs> At the time when you had it, you didn't think it was ever going to go? <laughs> These light afflictions are but for a moment. And if you can understand the Bible, it says that they're working for me. Teaching me how to overcome. Teaching me the authority that God's given to me. Teaching me what, what I have. Rejoice, number four, that you're born again. Rejoice on the... Get the monkey off your back. Anybody here got a monkey on your back? <laughs> I'm on my way to heaven. Shakabundi. <laughs> I'm on my way to heaven. Can't think of the next line. He gets sweeter and sweeter every day. Amen. I give you authority, it says. Jesus would not have told them, his disciples, or he wouldn't have told us of this, of this authority. if he hadn't meant for us to experience it. He wanted us to experience it and execute it. To use it against the wiles of the enemy and over Satan himself. How many people know that Satan has not fully overcome yet. We shouldn't hesitate to use this God-given authority against the forces of evil. Don't hesitate. Learn how to fight. But it's interesting here in Luke 10, verse uh, 20, it says, Nevertheless, don't rejoice in, in this that the spirits are subject to, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And then verse 21, it says, And in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit and said, Jesus is there looking at this bunch of people, 70. They come back, they're so excited. Hey, even the devils are subject to us. Glory to God. And, and I, I, I would imagine that it wouldn't have just been those few words. They, they would have started saying, yeah, there was this person and, they, and, and this happened and that happened and this happened. And, 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 you know, how many people know what I'm talking about? 
You see, that's what church should be like. I went down to the park the other day and, and there was this kid on the swing and I went over to him and blah, blah, blah. Next minute, devils come out, people got healed. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the whole park come together. We had a, we had a rally. <laughs> 75 people got saved. 25 got healed. Deaf people got set free. Blind people come along. Even the blind dog got healed. <laughs> See, that, that, that's what it's all about. But that would have been telling all these stories. And, and, and Jesus rejoiced. He rejoiced. And though he said that, hey, okay, I just got to get you back on, on line here. Don't, don't, don't major on that, but major because your names are written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. But then he said, I rejoice. I rejoice. Hallelujah. Why? Because you see, these ones were, were just babes. These were just rookies. New, new Christians even that had the power of God that knew where they stood and they went out there. And, and this, is what, this is what he said. He said, In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the prudent and the religious, oh, no, and, <laughs> and reveal them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seems good in your sight. All things have been delivered to them by my Father. Nevertheless, Jesus rejoiced over their victories over demons. We don't want to focus on demons. Let me say that again. I don't want to focus on demons, but I want to focus on the victory God has given us over them. I don't want to focus. I, the devil's here. Devil's there. Devil's chasing me, man. I've heard too much of that stuff. I'm not focusing on the devil. I just want to focus on the victory that Jesus Christ has given us over them. Hallelujah. We have victory. When they turn up, uh, it's a, uh, jo you know Joel Osteen, he's got that little church over there in Houston. Well, his dad's name was John. John Osteen, and he told a story there about, about demons uh, going up and down the street. And, and, and he said that, you know, they'd be ravishing other houses there. And when they got to, his was 36, when they got to 34, they said, shh, shh, shh. They got to 37, away they went again. <laughs> Don't go near him. He will kick your butt. <laughs> Don't go there. Nevertheless, Jesus rejoiced over their victories over the demons. We're not focusing on demons, but the victory God has given us over them. So if they show up, we use this God-given authority over them. Amen. Praise God. I'm getting to the end of this. I'm just, it's got me out of here. Finally, everybody say finally. What does that mean when Neil says finally? It means very little. <laughs> finally, number five. <laughs> Some might not see or understand what God is doing, but he will reveal these hidden gems to those with childlike faith. Amen. Have childlike faith. If he said it, it's as good as done. Do you believe that? Get the monkey off your back. Don't let it get you down. Take authority over it. And then begin to rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Get the monkey off your back. How many people... Know what I'm talking about. Well, get out here on the altar then. <laughs> if you're new here today, you'll find that this church is a wee bit different to 
some other churches. How many people, though, can honestly really know that you've got to get a monkey off your back? That thing that hounds you, that thing where the enemy is like a screw, and just screws tighter and tighter and tighter. And it takes, steals your joy, steals your victory, steals whatever God's doing around your life. Stops you from going forward. So I just don't want getting a bunch of monkeys running around the place. I want people to be set free so they can become what God wants them to become. If you're like that this morning and you're going to be honest enough, you'll come out and let us pray with you and believe God with you. And then you're going to not just come out here and say, well, oh, over, whatever it is. But you're going to go out of this place. When that monkey tries to get back, you don't give him a banana. Try to keep him happy. Here's another banana. You know, you get that thing by the scruff of the neck and you look at him face to face and you say, listen. <laughs> I've had enough of you. You're not coming back in this house. Get out. Make sure you've had plenty of garlic and stuff. I got this thing. I got a good grip. I got a good grip on this thing. I tell you what, and and tell him never to come back again in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you you come back again, you're not getting any more bananas. You're going to get whipped, boy. Amen. Amen. If you don't know Christ, you wouldn't have a clue what I'm talking about. You need to find Christ. You need to let him come into your life. You need to let him wash you. I still got hold of this book. <laughs> but if you don't know Christ, you need to give your life to him. It's the greatest thing anybody could ever do. We've got to get religious stuff off us. We've got to get junk off us. We've got to have a good shower in the, in the presence of God, amen, and cleanse, be cleansed and made whole. So that today, let's all stand to our feet. Let's just stand to our feet. I'm going to get Mark to come out and pray too. I, I love that anointing that's on your life. I'm going to get Tom to come as well and... Sharon's going to come as well. Come on, come on, guys. Just come out. Come on, you just want that touch from God. You want that monkey off your back. You want, to, you want whatever it might be that God, just, you just want to be that, you want to be free. That's another, that's a good, I want to be free, amen. And you know you're not. You know you're not. Come on, just quickly come and let the presence of God get around your life. Let the Spirit of God get around your life. Let God come. Come on, folks. Some of you are hanging onto your chair. <laughs> Whatever it might be. Just, just come. Just come. Let there be freedom. Let there be liberty. Let there be joy. If you don't know Christ, come. Come. And as we're praying for you, say, I need to know Jesus. I need to surrender my life to him. I want to give him my life. I want to give him my all. Just quickly come. Come. Come to Jesus. Father, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Father, we just want to just, just so much appreciate you and your word and Lord God, you, you, we're sent. And you've appointed us for a purpose. We carry your DNA. We carry your mantle. We carry your presence. Everything about you, we carry. We carry you, Jesus. I pray for Father for people to respond to you, to open their hearts so the King of Glory can come in. The Lord who will strengthen them. The Lord who will fight for them. Lord, we just give you the praise and the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen.